Hello everyone, um, it's good to be back um, doing our final discussion on the course and uh, this week's discussion post is regarding the problem of scale and how it factors into a government's um, ability to effectively operate and meet the needs of its population. Um, this is a um, particularly interesting um, discussion subject uh, uh, in the state of the, you know, the way we're currently in as a nation. and. Um, so it, it does beg the questions, what is the problem with the human scale, uh, or you know, the problem with the scale, with scale, and how does it meet the population's, um, how does, you know, issues of government meeting the population's needs. Um, um, in the video modules this week, uh, our final week, um, we were taught uh, extensively about Thomas Hobbes and uh, his views on government. Um, by Dr. Don Livingston in the, in the two videos. And of course we've read about it uh, in the books this, um, this, in this course. Thomas Hobbes, uh, he was born in the year of the Spanish Armada, 1588, to, and he lived to 1679. Um, of course, was one of England's most influential, or probably still is one of England's most influential, uh, most influential philosophers. Um, uh, he was probably the most important philosopher of his time. Uh, if not all in history, um, and he believed himself to be the first discoverer a, um, of genuine um, this like science of politics, um, and he believed uh, that such a science was desperately needed by his uh, fellow English citizens and everyone, um, and he believed that uh, uh, pol because political disagreements and conflicts um, were tearing apart his country at, at the time that he was. Um, putting all this together, um, you know, according to him, civil war is primarily caused by differing uh, opinions over um, who is the ultimate political authority uh, in a commonwealth. Um, and of course, you know, later on, uh, after his lifetime, a couple hundred years later, um, America found out, you know, is a fairly new country, hundred years or old, you know, hundred years or so older, um, old. Uh, found out about you know themselves about civil war and, and what causes civil war um, in his own time um, uh, the king's claim of having the final say on political matters is what called into question by members of par parliament um, one example that I found on the source that I note um, is when King Charles tried to raise funds for a war against Spain and France in 1626 parliament denied his request in response, the king used a forced loan to force uh, individual subjects to finance his needs. This action contributed to the rising tensions between king and parliament, tensions that ultimately erupted in civil war. Um, and according to Hobbes, the only way to escape civil, you know, real civil war uh, and to maintain a state of peace in the Commonwealth is to institute an impartial and absolute sovereign power uh, that is the final authority on all political issues. Um, he believes that or he believed that his political philosophy about all this really reached that conclusion that it would be an all-out prevention of civil war. Um, and, and Hobbes' political argument is um, is pretty sound, I think. And as far as in, in history, um, it's pretty general. You know, um, the the political problem of it um, is he presents his science of politics. Um, and it, it's found in multiple of his of Hobbes' works that he did um, in his lifetime, um, um, including the elements of law and um, and others. Um, these texts provided a, um, a great detail of insight into Hobbes' solution to, to the Civil War, as we as I mentioned, um, and they provide a, a very general understanding of the, the whole overall problem itself. Um, um, but yeah, he goes on um, to do other, uh, many other works that, that answer this problem of, of this political issue uh, to civil war. And I think that um, problem that like Dr. Livingston pointed out in his videos of um, the late Middle Ages and how that problem, you know, really began then um, with the Swiss, uh, you know, um, becoming independent and everything uh, in 12, the 1200s. Um, but it's really interesting. I think this, this carries on and, it, and Hobbes' philosophies and thinking then um, still, um, you know, 
still rain true today. Uh, and as some Hobbes scholars have pointed out, there is a logical priority to Hobbes political uh, works um, because they provide a solution to the problems presented in the historical works themselves. Um, to gain a, a, a much uh, better appreciation of Hobbes political solution, um, it's it's very useful to um, you know kind of go back and look at his work, some of his works, and you know reveal his true understanding of what these problems were and how to prevent them. So. I think that kind of leads to our subject today and or kind of answers it today because um, all this carries over and I think that's kind of where it began. Um, and with Hob looking at Hobbes and his works, I think it, it really um, tells a lot about this issue. So thank you very much and uh, hope to uh, talk to you in the discussion. Thank you.